Welcome back. You're watching Standpoint here on Morning Prime. And we continue pace with the conversation. And of course, I'll prime in what is happening today as well. I'm holding court this morning with Honorable uh, Makali Mulu, who is a member of parliament, Kitui Central. Also, we have with us David uh, Ucheng, who is a member of parliament, Ugenya. We have also with us Peter Kaluma, who is a member of parliament, Homer Bay Town. Gladys Boss Shule apparently went to another rival station, thinking that I'm there. So she couldn't really make it because, of course, right now, from where she is and the Mombasa Road, that traffic it will be chock a block for us as well. So we'll continue without her as well, but she has sent her apologies. But let me prime you on what is happening today. President Hul Kenyatta will today lead Kenya's delegation to the second segment of the fifth session of the United Nations Environmental Assembly. This is UNAIR 5.2 at the UNEP headquarters in Gigiri, Nairobi. The session, which has been preceded by environmental events since last week, will run until Wednesday as headquarters of the United Nations Environmental Programme, Kenya will use the summit to champion more global action towards halting the hazards of climate change. Earlier on, more than 50 countries participated in tree planting to commemorate the 50th anniversary of UNEP's existence in Kenya. The event which took place at City Park is a precursor of the fifth session of the United Nations Environmental Assembly, which, as I've mentioned, kicks off today, where over 2,000 delegates will come together to discuss climate change and, of course, the ramifications, nature and biodiversity, laws and pollution and waste. The biannual UNER will mark the fifth session since the first environmental assembly that was held in Nairobi in 2014. To welcome all of you from your respective countries to Kenya for the resumed fifth session of the United Nations Environmental Assembly, which will take place from tomorrow to Wednesday. We look for great outcomes. We look forward to great outcomes for the three days. And I very much believe that celebrating you never at 100, that will be under the shades of the trees that you will have planted and grown today. There is no greater inheritance that we shall have donated to our children. Each one of you representing your people, your countries, who today lower the seedling into the hole, water it, and ensure that it is nurtured to grow into a forest. I would say that this is a people's park. And if every morning, every morning, 5,000 Kenyans pass through this park in the morning, and they pass through the same park in the evening, going to work and returning back from coming from home and returning from work. That's about 10,000 people who interact with this green space on a daily basis. Beyond that, about 1,000 people visit this park on a daily basis. And the park is free of charge. It offers opportunity to all people in this country, of all classes and of all tribes and all nations. Today we are happy that we have offered also the space to your distinguished guests that we have today from many countries, possibly not less than 193. And we sure will give you a blow by blow, wall to wall, wire to wire live coverage there from UNEP today. Let's head over to The Hague where the trial against Paul Gishero at the ICC over witness interference resumes this morning. Gishero's defense team is expected to conclude the cross-examination of the third prosecution witness. The witness last week told the courts how he was paid two million shillings and asked to sign a contract to withdraw as a witness in the case against William Ruto and Joshua Sang. The conclusion of the cross-examination will pave the way for the fourth prosecution witness to, to take the stand, witness P0274. Like all witnesses will testify under protective measures, Gishero is facing eight counts of corruptly influencing witnesses in the Ruto and Sang crimes against humanity case following the 2007-2008 post-election violence. And of course, we'll prime you that also on the news diary much, much later in the course of the day. We continue pace with uh, our conversations uh, here with our panelists. And uh, our, before we took a short break, of course, I was with uh, David Cheng on that as well. And uh, we need now to wrap it up so that uh, you don't say that I've not given you a fair chance unless uh, uh, Horubokali you want to respond as well. David, are you done? 
Yes, let me say I'm done. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're comfortable with, with that. Just that I, th- I think, like I said earlier, we just need to keep on working on the Fiji democracy mm-hmm. because we, we, like Honorable Kaluma said, the Americans have been working at theirs for the last more than 20 years. And so we must keep on, you know, mining the ethos of democracy. You must keep on doing things the right way. The uh, Bali asked me even right now there's a new situation. Mm-hmm. It doesn't give us the ultimate results, but it's the best we have today. Just like we had something in zero two. We keep on taking five steps up uh, forward and then we take three backwards. Mm-hmm. And that's the nature of democracy. We just need to ensure that we keep building this. I have one issue that I'm hoping that this election will deal with. Yes. With finality, the ball. Your age and mine, since 92, mm-hmm. to this election, we have had the same faces. The same faces. Yes. Are running. The same faces determining how politics works for 30 years. And I'm personally hoping that this is the last time. And I'm just calling upon, especially the younger people, 40 years and below, mm-hmm. to take more keen interest, to take more keen, you know, knowledge in, in, in civic engagement, to ensure that we are not leaving the change movement to the older generation. Mm-hmm. We, we must take part in it, we must take interest in it, we must build our country. Because this generation are going to go out in these coming elections. I don't see these people that are doing these coalitions in this election determining how we'll need this country in the next 50 years. Mm-hmm. And I want to call upon these younger people to take more keener interest mm-hmm. in the activities of political parties, in what's happening in politics, so that we make our politics work for us and make politicians accountable. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Makali? Uh, just briefly, the ball on this matter. You, you know, the reason why we are having challenges with these small political parties, the reason why most of them would be called briefcase political parties, is because basically after every election, they become dormant till the next election. Mm-hmm. And what is happening basically is like they are there to reap from uh, the unfairness in the nomination process so that once I go through a nomination process and I don't win, then they are there to, to give me a certificate and then pay money. You know, there's nomination fee which is paid. Mm-hmm. And actually, most of them make a lot of money. But I like what Ocheng is saying that we, I think, I wish we had a system where they could just remain active so that they also become big with the time. You know, if you, if you just, after every election, you go, you become dormant, then you always remain a small party for quite a long time. So, so my appeal would be uh, I agree with what Kaluma was saying earlier that we don't need 100 political parties. But I wish, as a country, we could do about with 10. If we just got about 10 political parties, which have clear ideologies in terms of what we want to do, which are clear in terms of which, which side, they, you know, it's very difficult now. I've looked at a, a number of man, manifestos of these political parties, and you realize actually there's a lot of similarity in terms of what, what they stand for, uh, what they push for in this country. But you know, you know, if we are just about 10, then you could start seeing a clear distinction between what this party stands for and what this party stands for. Mm-hmm. In that case, then Kenyans could start associating themselves with now these parties on the basis of what they stand for. But now with 100 or so, then people will just go to political parties because either they come from their region and you feel that you don't then belong there, you're mm-hmm. not likely to win a political seat. So I totally agree, let's, let's grow our, much, our democracy by uh, ensuring that we don't have as many as 100 political parties. But we can have 10. But at the same time, it's also important that we have standalone political parties, other than coalitions where, where everybody is now pushed to that coalition and you lose your identity. And when things get wrong, then you can't go back. You can't have a, they don't have reverse gear. Mm-hmm. So you can reverse and go to where you have been. So, so to me, generally, this, this, this debate Thank you. is a debate worthy having it mm. as we move to the future. As we move to, move to the future. Yes. But uh, I'll be remiss if you don't close uh, uh, the discussion by asking you, Orbo Kaluma, if you're also happy with the judgment from the courts there, where we had George, uh, Justice George Odunga uh, giving the party's authority to use alternative means to conduct nominations, because uh, you were having issues with the integrated political parties management system, the digital register provided by the Register of Political Parties. Now they're saying, no, you can actually use your own uh, roles in primaries. Uh, why was this first, uh, first of all raised, and uh, why was it uh, raise, parties raising hesitations with this particular integrated uh, uh, political management system, digital register? 
Briefly. Yeah, yeah, you, you see, the ball, um, uh, if I were to go back uh, a bit, Kenya, of course, is a multi-party democracy. Everybody is free to form their political parties if they meet the criteria set in law. But it is not the business of the country to secure the survival of um, a political party, even if it cannot, uh, you know, <laughs> survive. And, and that is the extent to which I'm saying that where a party is uh, sufficiently strong, it can go alone. Where a political party is not that very strong or cannot, uh, you know, while standing alone win, then it will have to go into a coalition arrangement with other parties with the aim ultimately of uh, capturing power. And, 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 and that is the extent to which, uh, you know, I was saying, Dibal, that what a party would have to determine at that stage is uh, what coalition arrangement it should go to. And, 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 and you remember when NDP joined Kanu, for instance. Kanu absorbed NDP, that is major by absorption. When uh, yeah, the TNA and URP collapsed into, you know, the political formation we called Jubilee Party, they both dissolved. That is major by dissolution. Or, or you can have parties retaining their distinct identity, but, you know, converging based on, uh, you know, philosophies or their, um, uh, you know, popularity in regions to win seats. Uh, the ball, there is a thinking being pervaded by a more so honorable chin, uh, which seems to suggest that ethnicity is ultimately a bad thing. I mean, go to the United States of America. We may pretend ideology or whatever you call it, but the, the Negroes, the blacks of uh, America, in their majority, uh, lean naturally towards the Democratic, uh, you know, uh, party. Uh, the, the, the rednecks, the, the, the pure, you know, whites, uh, by majority, lean towards uh, the Republican. Of course, there are a few, you know, uh, shifts here and there. Mm -hmm. the, the, the same case uh, with uh, the UK. So that when elections are coming, the ball, even the United States, you see what they call the red states, very clearly drawn. You see the, 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 the battleground states, and you see the, 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 the blue states. Yes. My view is that the fact that the people of uh, Ukambani, for instance, can in their majority go to a political formation, speaks to their problems and, uh, you know, the interest they want to purvey and, and they have a convergence, you know, on it. No, not simply because, you know, that they are cumbers. Uh, even if we were to take it at the level that they are cumbers, then as a community they are looking at how best to secure their political space. There is nothing criminal about that. Of course, um, uh, the party ultimately must meet the criteria of having representation in the country. Now to the question uh, you are talking about, Dibal, and I, I, I believe this one, Makali uh, and an Honorable Cheng will agree to. When you go to the political parties register today, uh, my brothers, you'll find uh, a person who has never applied formally to be a member of any political party registered in a party without their knowledge. You'll find uh, members, uh, the ball of our Orange Democratic Movement Party, for instance, registered uh, in UDA. And, and, and most of this, uh, you know, recently, you know, formed parties without, uh, you know, the, 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 their knowledge. And that is the extent to which it was being proposed that the register to be used in party nominations, if the party were to apply the formula of, uh, you know, delegate system or to uh, apply the universal suffrage, must be a formula that uh, restricts participation in the party nomination, uh, you know, to the members of the political party. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you can have uh, members of other parties defining who the candidate is if you use the register of IEBC. And that is the extent to which that amendment, which was uh, you know, resisted by a few who never understood it, uh, was coming. And, 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 and largely it was saying that if, for instance, you have uh, ODM you know, members conducting their party primaries to uh, nominate their candidate for Roma Bay Town, it must be ODM members registered and certified so. And, and, and it was being said, therefore, the ball, and it has been confirmed, that uh, the rep repository of all uh, membership, uh, you know, registers and, and political party, you know, membership is with the register of political parties. So it should not be the IEBC, you know, register, but uh, a certified, uh, you know, documentation from the register. Of course, the fear on the UDSI debate mm -hmm. was that uh, there is this e-government, uh, you know, thing 
and, and, and there could be interferences by what uh, they call the system in terms of the register. But uh, I think we should give credit. Thank you. Uh, they do credit to institutions to properly run. Let us clear the membership. Let the Registrar of Political Parties issue uh, a certified register of members to all political parties so that we, we don't have that situation where Kaluma is in ODM but you find yourself in UDM and you're not able to participate. And, and, and that is what Article 38 of the Constitution Dibal, uh, you know, speaks to or says. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, unless uh, Honorable David McCarley, ah, not David McCarley, Benson McCarley, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, also David Cheng. You have something it to say the, on the, that? The, 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 the issue the, here is, yes. is this, that previously mm. parties would submit their membership list to ABC directly, previously, like in the last elections. The MDG would go into its mm -hmm. party register, print it, and submit it to the IBC. Yes. But now the new law we passed requires now that you submit your party register to the register of political parties first. So that after that, when now IBC wants that register, mm -hmm. you apply to the ORPP to give you your register that you gave it to it, to give, you give to it, certifies it to the true, the true register of your membership, then you submit it to IBC. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is the new mm -hmm. you know, provision in the law. And, and so what someone would be having an issue with, why do we just submit directly the way it used to happen before? Mm -hmm. And Kaluma has just rightly answered the question that IBC would then be able to harmonize in case there are any disputes about membership and all this, because it's the custodian of all the membership registers of all the parties, harmonize and ensure that, you know, if there are disputes, they are sorted out. But also, the fact that parties are now required to do their nominations if they are going to use what they are now calling. And by the way, the word direct nomination now means nominations through party members. The one where we sit down and give a ticket to him is under, under the law now called indirect nomination, not direct. Mm -hmm. So if a party wants to do nominations now direct, then the party must use its party members. Mm -hmm. And the party should not decide who the party members are. As soon as you do that, then you close that loop. Mm -hmm. The other innovation in that is therefore that once the period for joining political parties ends, there cannot be any monkey games that then you're going to again open the register and put people. What Michael was talking about, mm -hmm. that you go for a party nomination, you go to MDG party nominations, you lose, then tomorrow we find you in party in Wiper. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so once <clears throat> that is closed, then there's no room for this gerrymandering and trying to go around the political party rules. So that, that's what it really is, is about. All right, and, and it's unfortunate we don't have uh, Gladys Bose Cholet here because I, I, I would have wanted to know also from their own end how they'll be carrying out the nominations because I'm given to understand that uh, uh, then they will not use uh, uh, party officials, uh, uh, they will weed out the possible compromising of party officials um, by aspirants, mm -hmm. uh, where the National Elections Board, uh, of course, said there are no plans to have county election boards. Uh, saying that all operations will be managed by the National Elections Board. I don't know with other parties if that's the way you're going. I don't know what is happening with the... Actually, normally the, the, the National Elections Board is the one which oversees any party nominations because, you know, their work is normally party nominations. Because the general election, then IBC takes over. But, but I think what is happening, and that's why the issue of the party membership becomes very critical. I don't know whether it was an error in the system, but as Honorable Karuma was saying, there are quite a number of uh, members of a particular uh, uh, political party, you find you have actually been pushed to another party without your knowledge. I don't know what happened. And that's why we were saying, we need to make this, 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 this system, the digital system, mm -hmm. uh, very safe. Like, we, you know, like if you, Dubai, you have ever used the e-citizen, for you to access your account, they keep on sending you a new password every time. If you go to e-citizen and you want to access your account, they will send you a password so that you have to keep that password for you to access the information. Mm -hmm. I think that is what is lacking the, the, the political parties' uh, digital uh, uh, process. Because what is happening is people are able to, to and, I, and I, this has been, it's public knowledge. I think Yuda has been one of the parties which has been accused of doing that. Very many members have actually found themselves being members of Yuda, and they never knew about it. And, uh, but you know the new law we have passed, it is now very clear that uh, registering somebody in a political party without their choice or without mm -hmm. their, 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 their permission is actually now illegal mm -hmm. and you can be punished for that. So I hope that will help. But before even you punish, you need them to hold it what is existing to make sure that all Kenyans are in the right 
parties of their choice. <laughs> uh, but I don't know how that will be done because, you know, some of us who are in uh, uh, towns, you can easily check your party status. But you know that they are down there in the rule of our mothers and our sisters and brothers yes. who can't access these systems. So you, you, you are likely to find that at the end of the day, <coughs> then they have no way of knowing where they belong. But uh, you know, for example, like Honorable Cheng is safe. Because he's saying, in his political party, they're not going to do any nominations. So they either do consensus or direct. And in that case, then to him, the issue of party membership, rather than just knowing that this party has this number of members, they are not going to be used to do nominations. In that case, then, it's okay. But other parties like ODM and our party, where we are likely to have serious nominations because everybody wants to be in that party, then party membership becomes very, very important. And it's important that we get to know where are our members. Otherwise, if you want to be nominated through party membership, and then the party has no members, then it also disadvantages the whole process. Because if you realize, you might, do, you might be doing that with very few members, and the person you nominate, then it might not even be the, the, the most popular thank you. Uh, candidate at the end of the day. Right, thank you. All right, uh, let's just bring that to a close as well. But uh, I, 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 I didn't hear you talking about the process of nominations within ODM that you will be using if it's the universal suffrage, uh, Mr. Kaluma, briefly, or it is uh, the direct nominations. I know there are four of them. I rem I, the two eludes uh, my mind right now. You can refresh my mind, my memory. Yes, um, Dibala indicated that uh, the ODM will uh, employ the method that uh, best suits um, an electoral unit. Okay. I mean, if um, uh, it is clear and it is confirmed that um, David Chiang, if he were to be an ODM, is the most popular candidate to bag again the Ugenya parliamentary seat, uh, there, and, and, and the membership of the parties agree to that approach. It would be the way to go. I can give the example of our Oma Bay County, you know, currently the ball. For, for parliamentary seat, you can easily, using the scientific uh, method or opinion polling, you know, gauge who is likely to win. And, and therefore, as Ucheng was, uh, you know, rightly saying, the party does not need to spend so much printing mm. ballot papers, you know, putting the machinery to go down there which avails itself to chaos from the public when the person who will win because ultimately that is the aim of any party mm -hmm. is known from the beginning there are levels of competition uh, using the Oma Bay example uh, the ball like the the one for the gubernatorial you know contest we are going to have where you have four very uh, strong members and others and, and, and these strong members have really gone out there, you know, campaigning and selling their agenda to the public. Uh, in such a situation, uh, the, the best approach, as I was telling you, is to allow the largest uh, membership of the party Thank you. to signify to the party who should be the right candidate to bag the seat. So, so these uh, various, you know, four models uh, we have uh, ratified in our constitution Thank you. and nomination rules will be used based on the circumstances and the real political realities of each electoral unit. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's buckle down to also what has been happening uh, last week, and we just want to hear, of course, uh, the sites. We see the sites and, of course, hear the, the, the sounds as well from our softbox, which is up next. By OPM. I have been kicked, and I say Asante Sana, Asante Yapunda, Machete. Sisi ndiyo tulimfanya uhuru Kenyatta akawa rais wa Kenya. Kutueshi mubana. Mi, eshi nasi utumwa. Ama na mbegani jameni. Tunaenevana na watu edewani. Tuko pamoja. Tumeamua. Tumeamua. It is not about our individual gain. It is about the welfare of the people of Kenya. Kura zote ni zao wanainji. Na wanainji wameamua. Kwa hapa watapigia Kenya kwanza. Wangape hapa mnasema kura ni za Kenya kwanza. Na sisi na wauliza ndugu zetu tafadhali tushindane. Na tushindane na sera, wachaneni na matusi, wachana na kanisa, nini shindana na sisi na sera. 
na kama hamuna sera mngojee tarehe tisa wananchi wa Kenya wataamua wakati sasa wenzetu wengine ambao tulikuwa pamoja wamejifukuza kwa chama na bado walikuwa na vyeo bado walikuwa na kazi wakaanza siasa ya kupiga ile serikali ambao tulikuwa pamoja kuunda alafu juzi nilisikia mwingine akisema unajua ati hawajawahi kuona nchi kama Kenya ambapo serikali na upinzani wanafanya kazi pamoja basi mimi nikasema ananijibu basi wataona Kenya umeona mimi nimevaa yangu ya azimio mimi ni mwanajubili lakini kutoka leo kwa fikira kwa mdomo kwa damu kwa roho the unity of Kenya that we have been talking about that seemed so remote or impossible just a few years ago is taking shape before our own eyes Raila sio project ya serikali Raila sio project ya uhuru Raila vile Raila vile Raila hakuniuliza mimi chochote wakati alikuja kuunga serikali yangu when i had need vile vile mimi hakuna kitu nauliza kwa Raila mimi nataka good leadership for our country Come. those who we can do business with are here the enemy is known the enemy is defined the enemy is not in this room so shida ni wapi well i think uh, every person that uh, was in that arena must have seen what really happened to uh, honorable jimmy wenjigi the businessman come politician at the end of the day and the question is uh, was he invited to this delegation or not and was he warranted or was it warranted for him to do, to be treated in the manner that he was treated by hooligans at the end of the day we know how ticklish politics can be and if you're thrown into the arms and the hands of hooligans what they might do to you just as, as, as a matter of life and death you know we feared for his life and you being a part of ODM he claims that he's made his application to the party in September last year but the party did not respond to him because he wanted to be an, a presidential candidate and of course this matter was in court we hear that uh, yes the, the Secretary General uh, Edward Sifuna had categorically warned of course the security officers this is as far as the information we have is concerned that he should not be given you know the VIP or sit at the, at the VIP seats at the end of the day and security officers also were watching this you know full glare of the security officers while he was being uh, you know uh, roughed up by the, the, the political parties operatives I don't know if or the hooligans that they were at the end of the day let me just begin with you, uh, Horobo Bakali, looking at what really happened. Should you have treated this leader uh, in that manner, even if he's not really welcome for that particular uh, delegation, <laughs> and you just throw him in the throes of hooligans, <laughs> who will take your phone, will rough you up. Mm. You know, you, you never know what will... I mean, it's a, it's a matter of life and death, and especially as we're heading towards general election, we need to be very careful. Uh, especially with our statements or even our actions, do you think they acted in the wisest of fashion? Uh, I think, uh, let me just start by saying that uh, what happened to uh, uh, Honorable Wanjiki cannot be said to be good by anybody. It is not good as a human being. But you know there are some facts we must also get right. He has been a member of ODM for some time and actually it's a public knowledge that he He's a lifetime also, member of ODM. Uh, yeah, for, he has also participated. He's also public knowledge that he has also participated in quite a number of uh, uh, strategic decision making at the top there in the 2017 elections yes. and into the 2013 uh, elections. So obvious he's a ranking member. But you know, there's also this common saying where uh, it's actually casually said, but I think to some extent it, 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 it means a lot that uh, uh, political parties have owners. And Vyama up in our You must have heard that, that statement all over the place. So, what that means is uh, even though we are all members of the party, but in some parties, in some parties, there are also owners of those parties. And so long as you go against the position of the so called owners in courts, then you are likely to, have, to face very rough treatment. 
And I think that's what is happening to our friend. Because, you know, Honorable Joe also applied. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Honorable Oparanya applied also to be nominated for the presidency. And then uh, Maina claimed to have also applied. But what happens? Well, what, at the end of the day, uh, is that uh, with him, his application was reported to have not been received at all. The other two were received. But what happened? They, they, they had to step down in the level of uh, Red Honorable uh, Raila Odinga. So basically, I think, as you are saying, to me, it was just being told that this house, the door is closed. Don't, they don't cause problems to us. And if you so wish, you can go and start your own political party and move with it. And that's why you, you, you can see, you said he actually got that bit. And that's why you say, uh, Asandi ya, ya punda ni mateke. Mm -hmm. Because he really got mateke having, <laughs> having really worked for this party and done a lot for this party. But, uh, but as you say, I think generally what happened to him was not good. We must condemn it in the strongest terms possible. He, he should have been just be told, we don't want you here, please exit without really going through that, uh, that, that, that beating. I don't think it was worthy. Uh, a leader of this national uh, level being pushed, kicked. This is not what we expect of such a leader. And you can see it to cross uh, deep gullies as he took off. Imagine if he just got injured himself in the process, it would not have been good. So personally, I think w there would have been a better way of treating him. But as I said, you know, Viema Vinawanyewe in the bar. Right, David Chang, uh, briefly on that as well. Uh, <laughs> it's quite unfortunate what happened in, um, in Kasarani. But, Nibal, this is not the first time this is happening. This thing started with Kanu. Mwemo used to say that, Kama jina lako hakuna, hakuna. So you'd go for a uh, Kanu NDC, and you're told this is the list of delegates, this is the list of officials you're going to, you know, uh, work with, if your name is not there, shut up. His party leader, why did he leave ODM and then with ODM Kenya? Mm -hmm. Same treatment. You saw a babu being hounded. You saw some guy called Lagat being harmed physically. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a pattern that, that we must condemn. The fact that we disagree politically should not extend to, you know, um, personal mm -hmm. harm. But, but, but it's literally, in my opinion, the lack of mannerism in our politics. You hear what Ruto is saying, <coughs> hear Ruto saying, Eshima Sio, Utumwa. When you make the public to be personal, it, it goes badly. And me, I, here on this one, I blame the president, I blame the prime minister and all these people because these are their handlers. If you ask, these are their handlers. The, the way you But in this last parliament, we've seen MPs losing security because they, they oppose BBI. You oppose your security just with the because you oppose BBI. We've been brewing intolerance for a long time now. And, and so th 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 this, what happened to Anjigi, is not an isolated event. It's a pattern that must stop. And it's a pattern that we as leaders must condemn <coughs> and work towards stopping. Because I don't think this is the last time that we're going to be seeing this. You're going to be, <coughs> there are going to be a number of you know, functions going on and you see guys being thrown out. And, and it's just important that even for the media, you must call it out and say that you can disagree politically, mm -hmm. but you cannot go to the level of trying to harm people physically. It is wrong, it doesn't sell, and it should not sell anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's uh, where I would want to leave it. All right, Honorable Peter Kaloma, mm. you are ODM, Orange Democratic Party. Do you think in any way what you, you, you saw happening to Wanjigi is any, anything but democratic? He has mm. made an application since last year that, uh, yeah, he should actually be on the, uh, get, of course, the presidential uh, candidacy or that particular ticket, yeah, for him to run as a candidate at the end of the day. But you did not respond to him. Yet you've responded to Joko, you responded to Oparanya. Is there a rhyme or reason why uh, Wenjigi did not get a response, yet he had made an application? Yadibal, uh, those things you are talking about Jimmy applying whether party responded are um, the tantrums you hear Jimmy and Jiggy throwing outside there. You don't know the, the, the real facts. <laughs> I sit in the National Governing Council of the ODM party and the party's parliamentary group and I can tell you I have heard of Jimmy as an ordinary member of the ODM party. I have not um, 
interacted with these major roles Makali is saying Jimmy has been playing in ODM. In fact, I think I've, I've not met Jimmy at a personal level, despite being, uh, you know, a top uh, member of the party sitting on those critical organs of the party. I would personally say that what happened to Jimmy is uh, what uh, David Ucheng will tell you we call in law volenti non fate injuria that an injury you volunteer for you cannot be you know compensated jimmy provoked the situation which happened to him and, and to me i want to thank uh, was the, he invited he, he was he, he, he was not invited let, let, why, why let, wasn't he invited as a party let, member? Let, let, let me conclude huh? Uh, what we had at Bomas um, uh, Dibal was the National Governing Council of the party. The National Governing Council of the party, as the NEC, uh, the party's parliamentary group, the party's MCS governors, specific structures defined. But you saw Jimmy saying that he's going to Bomas. It was a uh, rubber uh, After that, uh, you remember Dibal. Jimmy went to court saying all those critical events, which are <coughs> timed by law, yes. uh, should be stopped, cannot go on. And, 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 and you remember when the court balanced the interest of the membership of the ODM party, which is in millions, against uh, you know, the petty issues Jimmy was raising, their application was dismissed. Immediately the application was dismissed, the ball, you remember Jimmy addressed the media. And, 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 and KTN, being uh, our most popular station, was there capturing, uh, you know, Jimmy, you can go to YouTube. Jimmy then says that what ODM is going to proceed with, both at Bomas and, um, you know, Kasarani, are the burial of a dead ODM party. I mean, you see a person who is essentially saying is there to wreck the party and, 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 and to preside over its burial, not to participate. So the motive of you know, Jimmy came into question. The, the ball facts, the facts are facts. Look at Jimmy leaving wherever he was uh, moving to Kasarani that day. And I want you, I want you to, to, to look at uh, even uh, what they are singing going there. They are singing, saying they are going to bury UDM. Isn't that provocation to the members? I don't like what happened. But really, when you reach a level where people are, you know, electing a presidential candidate, and, uh, you know, coming together under Azimio with all those guests you see in, 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 in ODM, then you, you are running with people on the streets talking of how you are going to collapse everything. You are provoking the situation. And, and if you provoke the situation, though those consequences uh, are understood, uh, you know, can happen. So, so the fact of the matter is that uh, Jimmy never applied. It was confirmed to us in the um, National Governing Council that only three people applied. And, and you've noted for the so, recent... So you want to tell me he's, he's lying through his teeth, that he made an application? And, and he has been lying all over. You saw the person, the character you're calling, Jimmy Dibal, is not currently in the habit of blaming everything that is required of him by government on ODM or our party leadership. When Jimmy is told, can we have your gun license, it is Raila. When Jimmy is told, can we have your certificates on this land, whenever Jimmy is in conflict with the law, Raila is the Inspector General of Police, ODM is the one running government. Now, uh, all taken into an account, Dibal, is that a member of uh, the ODM party, you know, acting in good faith. And, and, and see what he has been seeing. This is an ODM member. But look at his, uh, his cap. The rallying call of the ODM party is to Kotayari. The Dibal, you know it. But, but Jimmy <laughs> brands his own caps, and he goes there telling people, it is not to Kotayari when I say ODM, say Fagilia Water. So this is a guy whose motive is not in consonance with, with, with the party's motive. And a guy who has been doing everything possible to provoke the party membership, leading to what happened at Kasarani. So it is something that um, personally I, I would not regret. Instead, I would request Jimmy Wanjigi not to play the, the, the new sons he's been playing around ODM. If he does not believe in ODM, he can have, a, you know, a, a go at a political formation he believes can be right. And, and you've been seeing him. You saw Jimmy somewhere in Ukambani abusing ODM, yet he's saying he's seeking presidential thank candidates. You, thank you, but... Yeah, yeah, so, so <laughs> the, this, is not, this is not about uh, ODM, but this is Jimmy and uh, whoever 
is behind him <laughs> seeking you. to wreck ODM. And, and I'm, I'm grateful the members of the ODM party okay. said we have a very uh, good, uh, you know, occasion. We will not allow empty rubber browsers Thank to you. interfere but, in but it. But given that, yes, that is, uh, if you say that he's not really made an application, he was not really invited for that particular del uh, delegation, then do you think sending hooligans to him is, is the wisest thing to do? No, no, nobody sent hooligans to him. The party members reacted to what uh, he was chanting with that crowd he had while going to the event. If party he just, members if, reacted if, if, to him. Yes, if he just approached the event as a member going for the National delegate, uh, Delegates Conference, I can tell you, Dibal, you would have just come in. But this thing is in YouTube. See Jimmy from wherever is coming with those four vehicles. But 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 report we have is that he report that we have is is rivers. I mean, there was no reservation for him also for from uh, the the VIP. No, but he's not a VIP. We were there as members of the National Delegates Conference of the Party. Well, what reservation are you talking about? So uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, if he's Jimmy, not a VIP, there was no reservation at all for him as a member. He's a uh, lifetime member of ODM. No, I mean, uh, there was no reservation for, for anybody. If you are an ordinary member, mm -hmm. uh, qualified under the structures and the constitution of the party to be at the NDC, there was space for you. And I can tell you as an MP, I went there and I picked a seat. There were seats in the terraces and seats on the floor. You'd sit wherever there is space because uh, you, are, you are a member of the National Delegates Convention. That, that is it. So, so there was nothing to be like some seat golden or otherwise for, for anybody. Okay. Mm. The, and I want maybe also our panelists to just, the other panelists, Deb, uh, David Cheng and also uh, Honorable Makali to pick up on this. When we had this particular uh, event, we had Uhuru Kenyatta speaking and uh, Raila Odinga coming on the podium. But the most consternating thing is I saw Uhuru Kenyatta, you know, donning Raila Odinga the Azimio Cup at the end of the day. Uh, and I thought Azimio uh, is the originator, is Raila Odinga at the end of the day. So what was really happening there? You say politics is perception. The, 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 ball, uh, the ball is that a question you are asking of me or uh, yes. David Makali? You, you, you. Yes, yes. Thank you are at the event. Uh, thank Mac you. Makali wasn't there. Uh, David Ocheng wasn't there. The, the approach of uh, coalition arrangement we have chosen for Azimio is that the various political parties will remain, you believe, will remain. And the OCA, if they uh, uh, agree to come in, will remain as OCA, or under which wiper and other parties will remain, like Kanu. ODM will remain, and I'll be running under ODM, not Azimio. But, but uh, we have agreed to go into Azimio as different entities to, to fight uh, for power, Dibal. Thank you. Now, what these leaders were saying, that uh, President Uru Kenyatta, as the party leader of Jubilee, was saying, I've come from Jubilee. Uh, Raila was there saying, I've been elected by the ODM party as their presidential candidate, but we are all going into Azimio, and that is the extent to which you saw Raila uh, donning uh, President Kenyatta the Azimio Cup and President Kenyatta donning him the Azimio Cup. It is to be distinguished from what happened in Jubilee then, if you remember the battle, mm -hmm. where they were, you know, exchanging URP and uh, the TNA Cup. This one is collapsing ODM, collapsing the Jubilee Cup, which uh, President Kenyatta had just, uh, you know, been from, to now donning in uniformity. The Azimio Cup, and, and, and that is the extent to which you also saw them go with the other leaders. I hope you noted Raila and, 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 and President Kenyatta also donning the various uh, representatives of the various political parties who are there. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think you've made uh, that clarification, unless uh, WJ, you want to counter, or uh, that, that is given. But I want us to gravitate this discussion also to what was happening in Parliament, especially with the Elections uh, Management uh, Act, Amendment uh, Bill, as it were, right now, the issue of degrees. This was a, a, a special, there was a sitting also in, in the Senate regarding the degrees at the end of the day, that now that will not really, uh, you know, be a factor. Uh, it will be inconsequential come, you know, the 2022 general election. But help me understand, because I missed out uh, on what has been happening as far as uh, this bill is concerned and degrees is concerned, because I thought that was declared by IBC. Why then do we have people who are taking special umbrage with this particular, you know, uh, bill? Especially when it comes that it should be mandatory. The members who are running for these elective seats, they will be holders of degrees. 
Let me just hear from uh, David Cheng and, uh, mm. uh, and uh, Makali. We'll, we'll come to you. No, thank you so much. I mean, the, the law that we was passed in the other parliament was that those running for MP should have a degree. Yes. But we postponed its application to this election. Mm -hmm. and, and so in this election, we would expect that then, you know, this law would apply. But someone went to court. Mm -hmm. And the courts have told IBC, you have to clear those also who don't have degrees. So what happened at the Senate that Kipchumba Murkomen has moved a bill that would remove that requirement, basically amending mm -hmm. that law. This was a petition before the floor of the National Assembly asking that we amend that law to enable, to allow people to run without a degree. And, you know, there are so many reasons people are saying, you know, you should not equate leadership with the education standard, all that. And so as we speak, based on the court's order, IBC would be required to clear those who don't have degrees to run for member of the National Assembly and the Senate. Now, the law that was passed in the Senate last week definitely came to the National Assembly. And from, you know, from the vibes I'm hearing, I'm, I'm certain that it's going to go through. And, and I'll, I'll give you, you know, for example, I've, I've been going around the country now trying to get, you know, people running in our party. I can tell you that if you insist, for example, that the MCA must have a degree, you mm -hmm. probably end up with some words not having even aspirants at all. At all. The place where you go, there are five, six aspirants running for MCA, and all of them are only have Form 4 certificate, or even you know, division requirements that are, the division levels that are below that. And so for MCA, for example, <coughs> you know, you'd imagine that that would disenfranchise so many people, it would almost lead to direct elections, so many MCAs. If you we went, for example, to Turukana or West Pokot and all that, not that they don't want to school, mm -hmm. but because of, you know, the years of marginalization, you find those who want to run for those seats largely don't have those. And even in areas where people go to school, like in Nyanza, mm -hmm. you find people don't have degrees. Those who are trying to run for these seats don't have those requirements. And so, for this election, I think, like the laws that the courts have said, and even if you listen, if you, uh, listen to members of parliament, there are a couple of, a couple of us who don't have those qualifications, and they're going to convince people that, you know, you must allow us. Imba Kibaki had to save so many people by not, you know, signing the law that time. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I, I see us going to elections the way we did last time, without the degree requirement mm -hmm. for MP and MC. Thank you. Honorable Mokali. I, I, you know, you, you know, you know. The part I listened to my colleague, uh, Honorable Chen, and uh, anyway, for me, I've always stood my ground. It's unfortunate we want the leaders who have no degrees in Parliament. Mm -hmm. You know, me, Honorable Chen, and Honorable Kaluma, we have been in Parliament now. Actually, we are all second termers. We are almost doing ten years. And when you look at the work of a member of Parliament as uh, provided for in the Constitution. You do oversight, you do legislation, you do uh, budget making and representation. Other than representation, where you are likely to represent your people without really caring your level of education, I tell you about the other three. Legislation, oversight, and budget making you require some minimum level of education. And I really think that you can't do without a degree, especially those three. And that's when you see the ball, you, you, you be, I'm sure you've been observant. And Oche can bear me witness. When it comes to third reading of any bill in parliament, mm. you hardly get more than 20 people in there. Committee, committee of the whole, yes. Yeah, committee of the whole house. Mm. Kaluma can tell you. Mm. So, so these are guys who are in the house, but when it comes to doing the actual work of what is expected of a member of parliament, mm -hmm. They, they, they don't meet the expectation in terms of their uh, academic qualification. When it comes to budget making, imagine the bar. You are oversighting a budget of 3.3 trillion. That's what you're oversighting. The people, majority of those who are oversighting, don't even know what, 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 what a budget is. So you have PSCs really enjoying their time. You have CSEs enjoying their time because they come to committees. It's only two or three people can ask serious questions. So, so they always have their way. Thank you. And I think really about if we want to be serious in this country, why, why are we demanding a degree for governor and president? And we, we want to say we can't demand a degree for member of parliament. We agree MCS can be diploma level. But you also find we are not pushing so much money to the counties for devolution. My county tree gets not less than 11 billion. 
And you want that to be oversighted by somebody who dropped class seven, who dropped class eight. Thank you. Let's hear from uh, Peter Kaluma. <clears throat> because uh, before we come to this, you're talking about this uh, court injunction that we do have. But even prior to that, we had attempts from uh, Senator Murkomen. Uh, you know, we had him uh, speaking publicly, saying that he will not really agree. I think just the injunction is steamrolling what was uh, uh, already developing and snowballing to be where we are at today. People are saying because we have also some members of parliament uh, who uh, don't have degrees and they want to be seen in the next, uh, you know, uh, government as well. This is the protection that people are seeking for, you know, these legislators. Is there, isn't that the case? Briefly. Yes, Dibala, I don't want to dilute uh, the presentations made by Honorable Makali Mulu on the matter. I think I would go by it uh, word for word and in substance. Uh, uh, Dibal, uh, being a member of parliament or a member of county assembly, to me is a very serious business. And, 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 and if you have people who are going to budget, people who are going to oversight budget, people who can remove the governor or the president who has been elected by the people <laughs> from office, uh, people who can uh, impeach the deputy president, people who can oversight, all state officers and the ball you need to look at article 260 of the constitution to see the array of people defined there as state officers those are people who uh, ideally should have some solidity mm -hmm. of mind uh, which only some uh, reasonable academic um, you know uh, qualification can give you but ultimately uh, we understand that um, kenya is um, a democracy people have a right to representation if uh, some people in some section of the country want to be, you know, represented um, for the sake of it by somebody who is um, not uh, educated, uh, that is their problem. Thank but you. I, I can tell you, it is necessary that we begin thinking of the roles of these officers. And, and it is because we've not been thinking deeply uh, the roles of the officers that, uh, you know, we end up with people who do not have the capacity Thank you. to execute those mandates. So, so mine would be to say that uh, it is a matter to review. My position is that we need some intellectual capacity Thank you. For, for, for some uh, officers in the country. But, the Thank you. Finally, uh, we are winding up. Uh, we have this editorial cartoon, and I'm giving to understand members of parliament have uh, stashed, uh, you know, 25 billion, 25 billion shillings to cushion Kenya uh, regarding uh, uh, what is happening right now with Ukraine. So... The spikes of the oil prices uh, is bound to be affected with the war there. But uh, right, Russia and Ukraine, uh, right now they are actually having a meeting, or there is a meeting that is supposed to be happening to make sure that they tame the standoff that is happening right now. I want to thank our panelists this morning, David Cheng, Member of Parliament of Kenya. Also, want to thank uh, 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 Honourable Makali Mulu. Uh, on the Peter Kaluma for coming through this morning on Morning Prime standing or standpoint where they've given their views as well. Thank you very much for your valid company. Sports Chat is up next.